Okay, so welcome to our chapter formation meeting with Roger Hallam. Um, thank you everybody for joining this morning. And um, let's do a quick round of check-ins, starting with Jesse. Hey team, I'm doing pretty good. A uh, little hoarse from yesterday, but win some, you lose some. Um, All right, so it is my turn. Um, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted because I'm really excited about this meeting and I always love seeing you guys. And like that's on the outside of me and on like the inside, you know, I'm a nation burning in riot. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting on with this because I know I can get lost in your beauty uh, during this meeting. LJ. Hey, I'm doing okay. Um... Yeah, feel very conflicted about um, the protests going on in, in Cincinnati. I'm in a sort of weird position where I have like custody of my little brothers. So if anything happens to me, I don't know what happens to them. So, um, so it's kind of rough, but yeah, anyway, but not too bad. Donald? I'm doing all right. I'm looking forward to hearing what we've got to offer here and uh, feeling pretty good at, you know, as I can, given everything that's going on. Thanks, Donald. Nick? Uh, yeah, I got uh, tear gassed yesterday, which was fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's two of us already. Nice. Yeah, but I uh, can't wait. Yeah, let's get into it. Solidarity, friend. Good job. <laughs> Daniel. Yeah, like everybody, I'm sure I could do a 20-minute check-in on all the things I'm feeling right now. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to having this meeting. And um, uh, kind of disturbed by what you're saying about the medics tents, because I'm, I'm planning on setting up a medics tent in Minneapolis uh, later today. Check. Thanks, Daniel what you're doing, Guido. Doing okay. <laughs> Short and sweet, Roger. <laughs> oh, you're muted, love. Yeah, yeah, I'm all good. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about going into something as mundane as setting up a chapter at a time when people being tear gassed. So I'm not quite sure how to handle that one, but we'll just trundle along I suppose. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, is there anyone else? Jamie, yes, thank you Roger. Hi everyone, I haven't seen everybody in like four days so I missed you guys. I'm excited to uh, learn about setting up a chapter today. Um, and I am feeling everything everyone else is feeling, um, but at the same time, understanding that, you know, things change and how they change, the manner in which that happens is not up to us really to decide. And we just got to have faith that we're going to come out on the other side, you know, with a thumbs up. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Adelaide. And, oh, I was unmuted that whole time. And I've been kind of just rustling around in my room. Um, I am doing well enough. I spent all night last night, I'm working on making a new dress and I spent all last night trying to figure out how to make something work and I was really frustrated and then I tried it on this morning and realized that it's not that bad. Um, so I can just leave it how it was. So on one hand, that's good because I don't have to keep on fiddling with it. On the other hand, you know, I spent seven hours last night doing nothing. Um, and I'm also quite concerned about the riots. I mean, it's never a good time to riot, but especially when there's a highly contagious disease, I feel like it's, um, it's, it's an even worse time than usual to riot. But other than that, I'm, I'm great. Thanks, Adelaide. Okay, um, LJ Love, can you please um, post the purpose and the purpose statement? Can I get a volunteer who would like to read it? 
Thanks, Jesse. Can you drop it or should I find it? I have it in my notes. Um, I think LJ is dropping it right now. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I can't copy from that document. <laughs> okay. Um, I should be able to copy one moment. Or um, it is in, oh no, never mind. Actually, I was messing with you. I can. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. We are facing the breakdown of our planet's natural life support systems and a runaway global heating. We love this world and the beings in it and resolve to work together to save our families, our communities, this nation, and all people suffering from destruction. We will force our government to act by creating 5,000 Extinction Rebellion chapters in America and getting 50,000 arrestable people in the streets for mass civil disobedience. In XRA spaces, we leave our differences and quarrels at the door and our commitment to do what is necessary to serve the common good. Thank you, Jesse. And who would like to read the respect statement? Thanks, Donald. This statement of respect shall be read at the beginning of every meeting, uh, call, Zoom, event, and presentation. We commit to a culture of respect as we work together in person or online. We will, will communicate with mutual appreciation and kindness. When we disagree, we will assume goodwill on the part of others. We, we will speak from our own experience without making assumptions about what is in the minds and hearts of others. We will refrain from naming, shaming, calling out, and being personally judgmental. We will only commit to tasks we can do and will return those we have not been able to do. We are a community united in our work and everyone is valued. We are family. Thank you, Donald. Okay, so um, I guess Roger, would you like to? Yeah, 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 right. Um, well, thank you very much for coming at short notice. I wasn't quite sure whether it was definitely on, so. I didn't, I was, I went, I had a day off yesterday, which is just a bit unusual. <laughs> I went to a river for a swim. So I um, uh, didn't find out until this morning. I was on, as it were. So um, uh, I haven't done loads of preparation work or anything, but I think that's good because like, I want to break down the idea that I know it all and you don't or anything stupid like that. Like I'm just really here to facilitate what you want to do with your people, if you see what I mean. Um, not least at a time like it is at the moment. It's not really for me to be sort of coming in and making grand statements or anything. So, um, yeah. So I'm assuming everyone's good to get on with this. You don't want to not do it. <laughs> so uh, what I think it would, that's the first thing. So the second thing is like, what I think is good is to role play things rather than just intellectualize about them because we can just read, you can read the sort of blurb about how you set up the chapter. And obviously the main thing is, is um, you're going to have this chapter meeting and this chapter meeting is the next big step after the heading for extinction talk. Um, so it's, it's important that you facilitate people making connections with each other and you build a bit of a team and people get to know each other and what have you so we'll talk about doing that in a minute and so what i'll just say something about these trainings so me and uh uh domio sort of came up with this idea that maybe once a week we'll go through the next step and do some role playing so i don't want to like overload you with sort of training sort of stuff on the other hand it's really good you know what it's like before you do your first thing it's good to sort of uh test it out a little bit and once we've got past those first three or four stages then maybe that's over or you get or more particularly like you guys can do it yourselves or when the next trainees come along i'll be redundant as it were and you can you lead the role playing sort of get over the first step situation all right so i think it's all pretty fluid so if you if you find is you finding something pretty useful then let um uh michelle or whatever or tatiana uh, know or if you're not finding it useful then say so right because we don't really know all right so 
what I was sort of concerned about, I guess, or was I was initially thinking, okay, so the big hurdle is going out to do a heading for extinction talk. So I was really impressed last week that very people are doing it and it seems to be all right and you're getting a few people and the whole mobilization of the first bunch of people is sorted out. So that's all cool. And then the golden rule is at that heading for extinction talk, you're already invited, you've already got a time or a date for um for the for the for the chapter. And you're saying, okay guys, right, this is the deal. There's no point going back to, you know, being miserable. The name of the game is this is the real world. It's not waiting for us. Do we want to do something or don't we? Okay, so we're gonna set up a chapter and there's lots of chapters setting up around the states and there'll be a meeting for it, you know, come along sort of thing. And then you're going to check out people and text them and phone them or whatever. All right. So then we come on to the stage where they go, okay, they're in the room and you've got five or 10 people in the room and they've had five or six days or whatever to sort of get back to normal, whatever that means. <laughs> and, uh, and so they need sort of, they need sort of reminding of what the deal is. So I'm going to give a little role play. I haven't really practiced this. And I don't even know whether it's a good, a, a good, particularly good. So if you think this is a bit crap, that's good because then you can improve on it. All right. But I'm sort of thinking, it, I was sort of thinking like when the, the, the thing to do is, is, is give a sort of five minute reintroduction to the whole situation. And maybe in time you'll just rem memorize this because it's like, okay, what's extinction rebellion in america in three minutes <laughs> you see what i mean what are the key things uh this these are the key things so in a bit of a bumbling way i'm going to run through it so i'm not going to pretend that this is really rhetorical or anything but what i'll do is ask you know one of you can then do your summary of what you think the main points are and then you'll get used to that first hurdle uh, and then we can go through the chapter a little bit and maybe take a few questions and then what I suggest you do is buddy up and whoever you, you're going to be doing these chapter talks with two or three of you in the room, um, maybe even one of the core team. So you, it'd be good if you had a little meeting between yourselves and did a little bit more role playing. Um, OK, does that sound broadly OK? Um, all right, so this is what I'd say and I'm not I might sort of stop. Okay, I'd say, um, okay, hi, I'm Roger Hallam. I'm uh, from Extinction Rebellion. We did the Extinction Talk um, whenever it was last Saturday. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. I really appreciate you spending your time coming along. I know there's loads going on at the moment and um, uh, I want to go through the ins and outs of what Extinction Rebellion is about. In the Heading for Extinction talk, obviously we led, went through a lot of really, well, basically terrifying information about what's going to happen to America, uh, what's going to happen to our communities and our families. And the good news is millions of people around the world are waking up to this terrible reality and they're starting to organise. And although it doesn't look like a big deal, there's only 10 of us in the room, actually we need to remember this is a global movement and it's a momentous time in history and millions of people are starting to get their act together so let's just go through what the situation is again so i'm just going to say a little bit about the science uh to remind ourselves um okay i don't know what i'm going to say there <laughs> and i know what i'm going to say so i'm going to, i'm just going to talk for myself all right, so like I was talking to an IPC scientist like three nights ago who spent 30 years in, um, in the IPC process. And if some of you remember or, or know this, the IPC is this big body of scientists who are supposed to tell the world how bad things are. And basically he said the, total, the situation is beyond fucked. Like what the, what's happening is that the two degrees centigrade is already locked in and there's 500 parts per million of CO2 equivalent in the atmosphere because you've got to add in the methane and the nitrous oxide. And it, that might sound a little bit complicated, but the upshot of it is 
is at 500 parts per million. That's the same as 2.7 degrees centigrade. And if you want to know what 2.7 degrees centigrade is or whatever it is in Fahrenheit, then you can just read a paper that came out a month ago, which said that two degrees centigrade will be a billion people on the move around the planet. So that's like half of Mexico or wherever it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be, mean that the southwest of the United States is going to be desert, means that uh, Florida is going to be under the water and whatever's happening in your state is going to have X, Y and Z. Um, and then I'll probably throw in some personal testimony about it. Or I thought like having a quote from some people that have been in, in dire straits, as it were, in America because of climate change situation to make it personal. Um, all right. So the next thing I've got to say to you, I'm, I'm role playing here, by the way. <laughs> the next thing I will say to you all is uh, this is probably the number one thing that's in my head at the moment, which is there's loads of things happening in this country. But at the end of the day, if we don't organize properly, it all, it's all going to come to nothing. And that's why we're here this evening. And what that means is we leave all our quarrels and conflicts at the door and we focus on the job. This job is more important than any other job in the history of humanity. So it's beyond serious. And lots of social movements go down drain because everyone starts pulling each other apart. This is a disciplined movement. And it means when you come through this door, that's what we're doing. We're focusing on mobilization. We're focusing on action. And we're doing it in a respectful way. That doesn't mean that we don't have rules and the people shitty to each other, you're not going to be asked to leave. If people are shitty, they're going to be asked to leave but we're not having big debates, right? We're gonna focus on the job. So if you want to have big debates, that's great. And there's loads of groups out there. If you want to recycle plastic, that's great. Go and recycle plastic somewhere else. What we're about is mobilizing for mass civil disobedience. So, you know, that's where we're at on that one. The, and then what I want to do is just run through like the three key things we're gonna to do today. So the first thing is, we're going to talk a little bit about morale or what in Extinction Rebellion is called uh, regenerative culture. What does that mean? It means like the biggest thing we've got to do if we're going to build this movement is look after each other. That's the number one priority. How do we look after each other? It's not just fine words. It means we're going to have a regenerative culture group and they're going to phone people up every four weeks. They're going to have grief workshops. They're going to have film showings. They're going to do social events. They're going to get us together and relax with each other, support each other and, you know, start to develop some human relationships. Because one of the big things to understand about what we're trying to do is bring a load of people together who don't usually talk to each other, right? Because we need to build this mass movement. So we need to find ways to do that. And there's a bunch of ways we're going to look at in this meeting. That's the first thing. The second thing is it's all about mobilization, right? What does mobilization mean? It means we've got eight methods of mobilizing. There's nothing like unusual about them. It's just about a ghetto getting on with it. Go and do stalls, go and talk to people, go and do rallies, all these things we're gonna go through during the meeting. And not everyone has to do everything. If you don't like something, you don't need to do it, but we're not gonna expand the movement by sitting in meetings, talking about stuff. We're gonna go out and do it. So we're gonna go through that. And the third, and obviously the most important thing, is we're going to go and do civil disobedience, and we've got three steps to doing it. So pretty soon, maybe in this meeting, maybe in the next meeting, we're going to set time where we're going to go out and do something. We might just do a extinction rebellion symbol in the local park. We might just put a banner up somewhere. We might just stand in a row for two or three minutes, get a photo, send it to the press. You know, it's all going to be social distancing. Don't panic about all that stuff. But like we're going to do something. And the reason we're going to do it is because we need to get our bodies into some sort of shape, sort of to tell us that this is OK. And then the next thing we're going to do is go to the state capital in two or three months time. And we're going to do like a, lit, a civil disobedience activity. We're going to sit in the road and say, America, this is what's happening. Wake up. OK. And then after that, the big show is going to be next year in Washington, D.C. And the plan is to settle 5,000 chapters and have 50,000 people going to Washington DC which is going to want to be one of the biggest if not the biggest civil disobedience activity in British in in American history and if, it sound, if that sounds like really full-on then it is 
And the reason it's full on is because we've got an emergency and we're going to be facing the end of this country in the next generation if we don't get our shit together. So that's what we're going to do after that. OK, so I'm going to shut up now and someone else, my partner in crime, is going to go through the agenda with you. Stop. OK, so that's that's a shibudal, right? So it's not particularly great. You know, I'm sure you could. I'm sure one or two of you can be a lot more evangelical. I'm not pretending to be American. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe the, the tone is a little bit underdoing it, overdoing it, right? I think one of the things you're going to have to suss out is how sorted the people are in the group, because I'm a little bit conflicted in a way, because part of me thinks, right, okay, let's get on with the job, assign roles. And if people are quite confident, they might be up, to, up for doing that we, without beating around the bush. If they're more sort of middle class educated e types, then they're probably ready to get on with it. But if a lot, but a lot of people might not be like that, particularly once you get into talking to more normal people. So the first meeting might want to be quite informal, if you see what I mean. You might want to just get people talking to each other and then do the more sort of bureaucratic stuff on the phone. In, you know, going, oh, could you do this, that, and the other? So we'll see how that goes. And I'm interested, you know, in getting feedback on that so that we can co-design, you know, better iterations of this, of this first chapter meeting. So bear in mind, everything that me and the launch people are telling you is just a guide, right? Don't get too stressed out about it. Use your intuition. Anyway, so what, what I thought is uh, one of you, again, doesn't have to be perfect, uh, one of you give a give a, um, a little three minute introduction and, and then we'll take some comments about mine and, and, and the second person's. Some more wanna have a go. It's super stumbly, don't Thank you, Daniel. Don't worry about it, it's good. That's the whole oh. purpose of role plays, by the way. <laughs> right, Daniel, off you go, yeah. Am I giving an introduction to XR as a movement, kind of? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're just standing up at the beginning of your first chapter, move, and you're just giving a little pep talk. Okay, so uh, thank you everybody for uh, coming back here. I'm so glad to see everyone on the Zoom call. And uh, you're involved now in an exciting movement called Extinction Rebellion. And basically the problem that we're looking at is uh, the climate situation that we're facing right now which is uh, a science-based understanding of the world and the trouble that we're in. But also the reason we haven't been able to address it is the, the political problem that we have in this country, where uh, power has been consolidated at the top. Um, our Congress and our federal government have become dysfunctional. They've become so polarized that they really can't get anything done. So the, uh, the strategy that we're pursuing is to basically bypass the system and re-democratize our government. So we're going to be setting up citizens assemblies to, uh, which are going to be able to actually address the problems that we're facing and so that we can avoid a catastrophic uh, collapse of our, of our country and our civilization in the near future. So the way that we do that is we, we set up a bunch of chapters and across the country, and our idea is to get 50,000 people in the streets of Washington, D.C. next April doing civil disobedience until the government meets our demands. And we talked a little bit about our four demands, uh, that the government tell the truth, that we get to net zero carbon emissions by 2025, and that we set up citizens assemblies to do that. And then we set a target for 2030. We recognize that we're uh, all in this together in the world, and that uh, globally we need to be at zero emissions by 2030. Um, so I guess at this point, I might take some questions about that. I don't know if I missed anything. I, one thing I'm, I've been saying uh, sometimes is that XR is um, a movement that's really been designed very carefully to overcome the problems of the past, past movements who have tried similar things, nonviolent, decentralized regime change. So um, it's a bit like Occupy of about 10 years ago, but a big problem with Occupy is there, there wasn't a focus and there wasn't a clear set of demands. And that was a major weakness of Occupy. 
So we're coming in with these clear demands and this clear focus of what we want to get done. And we've basically um, tried to cut out all the stuff that's going to get in the way of that. Um, I don't know if that's about three minutes or if that's what you had in mind. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, so is there anything that stood out for the rest of you that like sounded pretty good in either what I said or Daniel said? that you'd probably want to mention. I think reminding people of the, the four demands um, and I think the emphasis on the focus of mobilization and action um, are, are really important. Donald? Yeah, uh, I think that last part, it could be just from my perspective, but the last part, how you mentioned how we specifically designed to try and uh, um, uh, address some of the problems of movements in the past and organizations in the past and we want to stay focused that that part you said you sometimes say it would say it but i think that was good i liked it one thing i left out that i have been saying also is um just providing some some descriptions of uh the april and october uprisings in the uk especially and just sort of the positive energy and um the way that people held the actions and yeah, yeah, so, and also encourage people to check it out on YouTube if they haven't seen it. Yeah, that was one thing I was gonna say was, uh, was something along the lines of, look, you know, this isn't just a load of theory as it were, or a bright idea. In the UK, 200,000 people have joined the movement and it's only got 60 million people, so, if we do the same in America, we're looking at mobilizing a million people. So they can do it in the UK, we can do it here, or something along those lines. So they don't think this is just Daniel's bright idea, you know. <laughs> you know, just dreamed it up one day. Um, yeah, and you know, possibly, I don't know what you guys think about this, but it might be worth, it's a bit difficult on Zoom, isn't it? But it might be worth like showing a video or something. There's this five minute video um of people getting dragged off and it's sort of it's quite emotional but video footage is really really good because the guys in australia do it they've got something as well if you remind me i'll put you in touch with the woman in australia who's got this five minute video i mean it really we need a video which shows people getting on the go all around the world in one video you know but maybe that's something to take forward anyway so any other anything else we'll take two more people or something uh, but like, is there anything else that sort of stood out or that you might want to add or something from anyone who hasn't spoken? Um, yeah, Jamie, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you. I, I particularly like how Roger pointed out that if you want to go recycle, go recycle, but we are a uh, rebel movement and that is our intention. Um, I think that'll help weed out some of the confusion that people will have. And then I also liked where Daniel brought up about the information for the citizens assemblies. And so that we can kind of tear this away from being a political, because I do hear from a lot of people, well, Trump this or Trump that, or we need this in the office. And I think that we need to understand that the entire system is fucked. Like forget the East Coast, West Coast rivalry, like it's over. Um, and then I really like the idea that Roger just brought up about the videos. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. If we actually showed them what we, were, what we will be doing, the fun of it and get them excited with it and comfortable with it right out the gate, that would be a great idea. So thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Guido? Um, I was trying to take some notes and uh, I liked that Roger focused on the three things. Um, morale, regen, kind of like to, to humanize, make it a little friendly, not to scare people off, uh, right out the gate. But I liked that, that the presentation was kind of forceful, that it had, um, you know, it was speaking with authority. And the second thing is that the focus is mobilization, right? Because that's uh, crucial for getting stuff done. And three, uh, the introduction of civil disobedience which was also presented at three steps from local, state to national. So it kind of um, gives the whole, the whole thing in like five minutes, like the whole game plan. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, well, let's, let's, uh, let's have two more people. 
maybe in the next two people you can just say something about yourself because there's this other little thing i think we've talked about haven't we is not like present i mean like you know says it's good to speak with authority but also it's good to speak with humility as well and say look you know i'm not I, this is the first chapter of saying up <laughs> help um and um uh so that people feel like they've got access into a relationship with you they're not going oh you know nick's looks super cool and he's like you know he's got it all slick and i'm just going to be wait wait to be told what to do what you want people to do is go oh you know nick's a nice guy but you know he's obviously not quite got there yet which is great because I want to help and maybe I could help with facilitation with him, you know, that sort of thing. So it's an interesting sort of balance. So, um, yeah, so put a little bit of a personal story in, in it, maybe we can focus on that. Okay, or not as the case may be. So two more people do three minutes each. Again, don't need to worry about covering everything because people can look at this video and go, okay, I'm going to select these points, right? Um, yeah, uh, who, else, who wants to go next? Someone, someone new. We're all feeling shy. Okay. Um, I guess I'll take the plunge and totally mess this up, but mistakes are our best teachers, right? So, okay. Yeah. Um, hello. Well, I'm going to hold on. Right. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for um, attending my Heading for Extension talk and for coming to this meeting today. Um, a little bit about why I'm so inspired by Extinction Rebellion. I just want to give you some background. So I've been an activist for a while on lots of different aspects of you know the system uh, and how it oppresses us. So I've worked for like reproductive rights and you know racial justice and trans rights. But um, what I what I believe Extinction Rebellion does is it harnesses everything because what we realize what we always talk about in activism is that people don't mobilize until it's personal and it's hard to make people feel empathy for a thing that they're not personally touched by. And I realized that all of these sort of compartmentalized things, um, you know, can be encompassed by the fact that everybody is touched by climate. All of us live on this planet. And this is the one movement that not only with its ethos and its, its personal um, impact can mobilize the most amount of people under its umbrella, it is also doing it with a really disciplined discipline plan for um, civil disobedience that has been shown to work. So there is a study out there, which I can share with you, uh, that shows if you mobilize 3.5% of a population, you can affect systemic change. They did it in the UK. They mobilized 200,000 people out of, oh God, how many were in your country? 60 million. Um, and if we can do that in America, that'd be about 10 million people. And we have a plan to do that. So essentially, um, we know that we are in a climate crisis. We know that um, there are vast impacts that are already being felt in places that seem far off, but actually are also being felt closer to home. You know, be it the wildfires that we are experiencing every year, or um, you know, the uh, amplified hurricane seasons that we're having because of the way the uh, winds. Um, I'm not explaining this well. Never mind. Skip that part. Um, so, uh, as such, everyone talks about how bad the climate's going to get. And what I don't think we realize is that before, like, final climate collapse, where things become really dire, we are facing the much more immediate problem of societal collapse. Because before we get to that point, the systems will begin to degrade. And the system that is already set up to exploit all of us um, is only going to become more predatory and more exploitative. So we know that civil disobedience works. And we know that the most effective way it works is through a nonviolent um, mobilization. Because I think it's 33% of violent mobilizations have effects, but 66% of nonviolent mobilizations are effective. And we are strictly nonviolent. And one of the reasons why nonviolence works and has a greater impact is because of um, the, the sense of having like the moral upper hand, seeing, being able to show people that, you know, we are not 
doing anything negative to the state, but in some aspects like showing display, like letting the state denude itself in what it will do to us. And that mobilizes more people to our cause. So um, we have a plan that starts at the local state and then the national level where we are creating these chapters. And um, as each chapter has a limit of about 50 people and then they have to break into two because we know that we need um, smaller groups to have more connection into them. Um, once we are gonna, once we form this chapter, we're going to have sort of like little actions um, oftentimes so that we get used to it, not to create any change uh, at that point, but we can recruit through them. We can also just get ourselves used to them. And um, then when we have enough chapters in a state, we're gonna have a state action in the state capital. And then we are building to a greater mass mobilization of 50,000 arrestees and you know tens of thousands, 100,000 more to be able to be in support and solidarity with them and do all the other roles that are extremely necessary. So uh, one of the things that I do love about Extinction Rebellion and that really makes this feel like a home for me is that in all the other activism that I've been participated in, there's a lot of, um, I've, I've personally experienced a lot of sort of organizational toxicity and um, just this, you know, like cliques and activist superstars and this weird ego thing and um, somebody called it recently the uh, the organizational industrial complex. Uh, it's, you know, it mirrors and interpolates the sort of white supremacist uh, structures that we already have in this world and inflicts them on its people. And I believe that if an activism organization is to survive, it needs to model the world it wants to create now. And Extinction Rebellion is the only one I found who does that because we have a very um, strong focus on our regenerative culture, which is somebody will be calling in to check on you. We have empathy circles because we know that we need to sustain ourselves for the fight ahead. And um, it, it's something that I've not seen anywhere else because uh, this is gonna be difficult. This is gonna be also difficult internal work because one of the things about Extinction Rebellion is that we welcome everyone. We are a non-political, an apolitical organization. So um, there may be people that you disagree with, but I believe that to make this work, we have to be very focused and very disciplined. We are about mobilization and we have to adopt the politics, the ethos of the trench, you know? You don't care about the nuances of what the person next to you believes. The only thing you're focused on is the enemy that you are facing together that you need to unite to fight because we can only fight this through unity. Right. That was now, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. Oh my God. <laughs> That's great. That was great. Okay. So, person number two who hasn't spoken, done it yet. You have a go. Wants to have a go. All right. Sure. Or wait, LJ, were you going to? Or is it too late? Sorry, LJ can come. You can, you can do it next, LJ. Don't worry. Uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we'll have one more go. Yeah, Donald, off you go. What are we aiming for? Three minutes or five minutes? Or yeah, yeah. Let's go for, for three the minutes. seven that I took? Three yeah. Minutes? Okay. <laughs> all righty um thank you all for coming to the chapter formation meeting here uh for those of you who have been to the heading for extinction talk uh thanks for that i'll cover a little bit of what that was uh very quickly i guess i can say uh it was you know climate change is bad it's happening now and it's going to be worse in the future if we don't do uh what we need to do on it um there is hope there is stuff that we can do uh, the severity of how bad things will be depends on what we do now. Extinction Rebellion America here has a really detailed and, and concrete plan. Uh, some would even call it disciplined. Um, I probably wouldn't say it that way. But anyway, um, it is a very detailed and concrete plan to achieve its, its goals and to get what where we need to go. Again, in the UK, they have... Uh, gotten some pretty good wins and concessions uh, mobilizing there and 
So we need to try and get this at least as much as, as they got there here. And we can do that. Um, so for this meeting, uh, we're gonna go through what groups we'll need to form uh, to start your chapter, uh, the different criteria to make sure that we, we meet that goal uh, because oh, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we don't just, uh, you know, kind of dissolve into into uh, too decentralized, um, kind of just do whatever we want and then nothing ever gets done. Um, there needs to be some structure here. And so that's what will help you figure out here and will help you move forward into, I suppose, the next steps from beyond there. This is part of a, of a plan leading up to that national action that was mentioned in the talk. Uh, 50,000 arrestable, about a million people involved in some way on the streets in DC. And so about two to three months from now, we're gonna to wanna to do a state action uh, at our capital, and that will need some people. We'll need to be prepared for that. And that helps us prepare for the national. And then leading up to the state, we'll wanna do some local actions as well. And those can be small scale stuff, but uh, it helps us get our feet wet and figure out what we will need to do on that uh, when it times for, comes time for the bigger stuff. Um, so again, thanks. And I guess let's just get into it. I don't know if that's great, great. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's great. Uh, let's take LJ and then we can discuss all three. <laughs> Drop let's you do in. it. <laughs> Hey everyone, um, I'm LJ. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. I know most of you by now have seen the Heading for Extinction talk, and that was pretty heavy stuff. Uh, <laughs> but good news means we're waking up. Um, and even though you've seen the talk, I'm just going to wrap up a few things about just a reminder of the emergency that we're in um, and that we're on the verge of societal collapse. Um, but also, you know, what our focus is. So uh, before we start getting into the nitty gritty details, we can remember why we're all here. Uh, so yeah, so XR is a global movement. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty important time in history right now, as you all can see with the political climate that we're in, especially in America, everything's so polarized. Um, and then you look at what's going on with the climate and our ecology and all the tipping points that we're near. I mean, it's, it's really scary stuff. I know I'm scared. I can't, I mean, for any of you that are young, like it's hard to even think about the future. You can't think about getting a house or getting married or having kids, um, which is really sucks. And even for older people, you know, it's, your future too. I mean, this is a lot sooner than we think. Um, so again, I really thank you for your courage and for being here right now. It means a lot to me. Um, and so about XR, if you don't remember from the talk that we had, uh, we are focused on mobilization and action. Throw politics out the window because we ain't got time for that. Uh, you know, we aren't going to spend any time bickering or having these long-winded debates. Um, we, we really got to focus on organizing people for mass civil disobedience. Um, and that's sort of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to get into our region culture, which is, you know, keeping morale up because doing stuff like this, I mean, obviously requires a lot of our time and energy. Um, and so we really believe in taking care of ourselves and taking care of our neighbor. Um, so that's, you know, that's pretty important stuff, but also, like I just mentioned, we're going to focus on mobilization. So we have sort of these eight methods, whether it's talking to people directly, knocking on doors, hanging up flyers, holding a rally, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit. And then of course, we'll be talking about action. Um, first on like a local level, we'll plan our first uh, tiny five minute action with like blocking a road, which will be fun. And then we'll get into how a few months from now, we hope to organize a, um, you know, um, a sort of disruption at the state capitol in Columbus, if you're in Ohio. 
uh, which will go on for about a weekend or two. And then hopefully next year, our ideal date is I think April, um, sometime in the spring next year, we wanna get 50,000 arrestable people in DC. We wanna mobilize you know, as many people as possible, hopefully up to a million or so would be amazing, which you know, sounds pretty ambitious, but we really need a, um, we really need an action um, and this sort of disruption that's equal to the problem at hand because we've never seen anything like this. Um, and I think we can all agree on that. But yeah, anyway, I'll hand it over to my partner who's gonna go through the agenda now and get started. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> To me again. <laughs> okay, so some good bits that came out of that for the rest of you, out of one, uh, out of one of those three or more of those three presentations. Something that stands out. I like that LJ highlighted, um, and I wish I'd done that more. And I just made a note to myself to do that more. Uh, this, in this talk, that the, we don't have time for endless political debate over political difference, uh, endless debate over political differences. And I also want to, I guess, add in what I had gotten on on XR NYC's welcome call, which is like, we do not engage in call out culture. Everyone's on a different place on their path, and we, we need to respect people where they are because we can't wait for perfect people to build a perfect movement. We're all imperfect and messy, so like, come into this movement, you know. So thank you, LJ, for sparking that. Yeah, uh, Jamie and Adelaide, did you want to speak? I can't see you, so just say a uh, stack or something, yeah? Um, yeah, Jesse, did you want to say something? Sorry. Yeah, I wanted to say I really liked how you, like, it felt very conversational and you brought up the fact that you were scared and you personalized it by saying, you know, for younger people, it's harder for us to think about getting a house and having kids, especially when we're facing a crisis like this. I thought that was a really good idea. Yeah, Jamie, great. Sure, um, I'd like to add in something that came to mind um, while I was taking notes, you know, that there doesn't have to be that many people at the first few meetings. Um, and I don't want, like I would encourage people not to feel discouraged if there's only three or four of us at a set up chapter meeting. Um, I would let everybody know as well that um, they don't need to be climate scientists to make a difference and to be a part of this movement. And then I would explain to them different things that they can do and what we can all do together as a team. And um, I, would, I would like to keep it like informal, like Roger said, in the first meeting, chapter meeting, talk about actions, talk about people's familiarity with actions, if they've done any type of protesting in the past, what they've done, and really just get people pumped up like for the movement, like to, to take action. And I really like, the fact that you said it's a disciplined movement and that we're not just going to be out here causing causing trouble with no agenda yeah i think one more comment and then we'll sum up a bit um anyone not made any feedback on it um adelaide what are you thinking or um sorry i just had to unmute um i've been quite quiet i i think it's i i i like that somebody's already said this but i really like how you kind of differentiate okay this is not just kind of like a general activism thing we're focused on one thing you can go recycle on your own time you know, recycling is still important but that's not why we're here so we really need to stay focused. I thought that was really, really important. And I thought I, I thought that was well said. Yeah, great. So maybe there's three things coming out of this. First of all, like, um, you know, keeping it personal, what LJ did, I think everyone agrees, it's pretty spot on there in terms of this is me, this is what I'm thinking, this is where I'm at, that sort of thing. And another big thing that sort of comes out of it is saying, look guys, this isn't just a disorganized rabble, 
it's you know it's a disciplined process or whatever word you want to use and then thirdly this is the plan so go through that plan which is the regen morale thing the uh mobilization we're getting on with the job thing and we're actually going to do stuff thing um so maybe that's a sort of architecture of it um i've got two one i'll just mention quickly two or three things one thing i would have i missed out is this idea of being in service i think that's personally i think that's a really maybe there's a better way of putting it it for you guys but the idea look you know like tatiana said like you know everyone's messed up we're all at different stages this isn't about judging each other it's being in service to this great cause and something positive like that um another thing is saying we rather than you so it's not like hey guys you're over there i'm me i'm just giving you the the stuff and pissing off sort of thing <laughs> it's like we're all in the scale i'm here to help you i'm not sure what i'm doing i need your help that sort of thing um yeah and yeah i've got waking up here i thought whoever said that was good waking up is a good something good isn't it um so i think we haven't got loads more time so um i'm not really going through you know i didn't want to go through the tech the the details because you can read you know you can read like the run of the meeting and as several people have said you can adapt that right and it'd be good to get feedback to michelle or to the rest of the group about what starts going well and what goes well in those meetings you know so maybe there's two or three sort of ways doing that right there's no one way right way um so what i think would be good is if two people maybe volunteer to go watch this video and maybe do a template for everyone else um you know a list of things so would two people be up for doing that just watch it together and make a list to so jay tatiana and uh, lj yeah is that okay mm -hmm. so so let's say um you can do that by the meeting on wednesday or something would that be okay it doesn't have to be a big deal um just like one page key points you don't have to say all the points and then you can share that and we can put that in the manual as a as a um as, as one of the documents so as you can see what the idea here is that i gradually ease myself out of the system by getting you to do all the stuff so that you own it and this is a general you know this is a, a general way of um a general way of sort of dealing with the work that you're dealing is always trying to be bringing other people on so they're doing stuff so they own it right it's a big principle so and the last thing i was going to say was was i mean maybe some of you and do this anyway in which case that's cool but it's super super important that you just practice doing your little speechy bits like even if it sounds really crap it helps enormously if you've just gone into a quiet room and you just read out your little speech <laughs> and because if you do it two or three times you probably get like 10 times better you know because you're not thinking you've got a little bit of day but do, for most people's memory if you do something two or three times you, you get really quite good at it and obviously once you've you know once you've done three or four of them you'll do, be doing it in your sleep um so even if the first one's really crap which it probably will be <laughs> you know it doesn't matter uh just just read it out and you'll you'll what through reading it out you'll go oh that vision wasn't that good and that builds quite a few notes um yeah so that's it really i hope that's sort of reasonably useful and obviously like you can do it you're in your little teams can't you so maybe you role play it with each other um and um, be quite kind to each other <laughs> so, you know she starts going like all the good points or uh, stay positive <laughs> you know we say god that's rubbish you don't want to do that <laughs> okay um all right is um let's have a little check out then quickly and obviously if any of you want to follow through one or two people have emailed me so that's cool or I email jolly if you think you want to have a little one-to-one -one chat about something just email me this is my big priority at the moment making you happy <laughs> thank you um yeah um yeah so uh yeah let's have a quick 
uh, check out and then um, and then we'll go. Okay, we'll go. Uh, in who wants to start? Reverse order of last time. So Adelaide, could you start us off? Yes, I can. Um, I found this to be very very helpful. This is my um, this is the thing that I was kind of worried about most is kind of how to go about doing this. So just kind of knowing that there is kind of a, a process and um, it's kind of what to do is, is very good. So, okay, thank you. Uh, Jamie, is she having connection problems or am I? Me, maybe? Yep. Or Adelaide? Uh, no, I was asking about me and Adelaide's connections. Jamie, okay, go ahead. Me? Okay. Yeah, thanks. That was a lot of fun. I got some really good ideas. I've been working on my script uh, for over a week now, so I'm really looking forward to giving our first talk next week, uh, next weekend, Daniel and I. And um, yeah, thanks everyone. I'll see you guys in the next meeting. Roger, would you like to go next or you want to go at the end to wrap it up? No, 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 I'll go now. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm sort of aware that wasn't very long, but you know, doing little shots of things is good. It's better than doing nothing, isn't it? So uh, yeah, uh, so thanks very much. And yeah, I'll pass on to Daniel. Yeah, thanks, that was really useful and uh, appreciate everyone's time. Everybody stay strong, I love you, bye. Guido, please. Would you like to check out? Awesome. I'm glad this uh, little meeting was called and that I had a chance to see it and hop on, um, even at the last minute. And uh, we've got our first um, kind of uh, step two talk tomorrow. So this was a kind of a helpful outline. So we're going to jump in with some of the people we met from our talks from last week and very excited. Nice. Nick. Yeah, same here. Um, we're having a meeting tomorrow, uh, so thank you, thank you for the useful information. Um, looking forward to the next uh, trainings. Right on. Thank you, Donald. Uh, yeah, lots of it's already been said a bunch of times. Lots of good information here. Um, looking forward to using it. Uh, a little bit chilly and tired, but uh, everything else is still true for sure. Thank you. Thank you. LJ. Hi. Thanks, everyone. Um, love learning. Love, uh, love seeing your beautiful faces on Sunday morning. Great way to start the day. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, LJ. Um, yeah, it is great to be with the team with everything that's been going on. Uh, it's always regenerative just being with you guys. Thank you, Roger, for um, finding time, making time in your, I can imagine, incredibly busy workload to give us these five weeks of trainings. Thank you all of you for hopping on with such short notice because I just found out right before I sent you the email last night. So thank you. Um, and yeah, this was, this was really good, solid like practice. Um, and I will be practicing it a lot more because obviously I have to, but mistakes are our best teachers. I'll just keep telling myself that. Jesse, <laughs> could you please? Yeah, so I really appreciate the chance to watch you guys give your little spiels. I definitely kind of copied it a little bit, and I'm going to be uh, making my own little script. Um, and yeah, stay safe, everybody, if you're going out and protesting. Nice. So, all right, well, um, just to wrap it up, like LJ and I will be getting out that uh, one page of key points that we discussed in this meeting. Probably, I would say, LJ, probably by the end of day, possibly, because we're going to be having a meeting right after this to clean up our notes and so forth. So um, we can have that out to you. And there's an, the next open gym is scheduled for Tuesday, I believe, right? So am I mistaken on that? I think it's Tuesday. Um, so for the Tuesday open gym, we can use that as an opportunity to practice um, our little spiels that we will potentially worked on in the interim, right? And uh, that way uh, we can be feeling more comfortable with it as we set up our subsequent meetings. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you, Roger, for coming next, on notice. Next what? open gym is tomorrow at 2.30. Just kidding. It was originally planned for Tuesday, and then we changed the schedule. Tomorrow at 2.30. Thank you so much, LJ. Uh, so we will have those notes out to you, and you can have some chance to work on your talks, or just work on them, you know, freestyle, and then have notes to um, what you want to 
improve on. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you, Roger, for coming on short notice and everyone else for also doing the same. And same bat time, same bat channel next week. Have a great day, everyone.